going to start by doing the uh, roll call. See who's here today for the May 7th board meeting. My husband's all birthday. Right. Please um, make all right. you um, yourselves. All right. So, Rebecca Beal. No Rebecca yet? No Rebecca. All right. Linda Corliss. Just here. Hey, Linda. Travis. Yep, Warren. I'm here. Rebecca Hopper. Is Rebecca here? I believe I she's her. here. I wonder if she's muted. She's there, but she's muted. She's yeah. muted, yep. Yeah. Rebecca, down in the lower left, there's uh, a thing to unmute. <laughs> I need a card that says unmute. Um, all right, Denise Mallet. Yep, yeah, here. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah. we can. Rebecca. Yes, her, this is Rebecca. <clears throat> Um, Lynn Manley. Here. Here. Nancy Newbert. Yep, Nancy's there. It's on mute. It's on mute. I'm, I know. I'm, now I'm all set. Okay. <laughs> okay. You're here, Nancy. All right. And then Joanne Potter. Here. Okay. And do we have Becky yet? Becky Beal? No, and I've no. texted and, and called. I, I'm not getting through. Okay. Oh, there she is. Becky Beale is hey. here. Hey, Becky, are you here officially? Sorry, I am here. They said I was the only one on the call when I tried to call in, and um, it didn't let me come in with the link. So something's wrong with the link. Okie doke. All right. I came in through BC TV. Thank you. Oh, okay. uh, let's begin with um, public input, Denise. Um, if you could read the input statement, yep. please. Um, so the first public input session is a 15-minute session with each person <coughs> three minutes in which to make a statement. Um, the second public input session may be held at the end of the meeting if allowed by the board chair. The speaker will give his or her name, address, and reason for speaking. Um, public input is designated for district residents, yeah. but the board chair may grant non-residents the opportunity to address the board. Statements concerning subject matter that falls under the law regarding executive sessions cannot be made during public input, for example, matters involving personnel. Um, and I believe, what is, is our, is our process the same as it has been to call to Yes, I think so. Yes, Jen, can you unmute? Is anybody in the BTTV land? Yes. I can't hear any of the conversation. Yeah, there's a super yeah. bad um, delay for me, too. Does everyone have everything turned off in the background? That we can't have, this is, this is nuts. <laughs> Did we Hello? lose a Frida? Hello? No, I think it's just there. I had muted myself. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I forgot. All right. Um, all right. So, Estrita, there's a lot of people that can't hear. Like, super delayed. Yeah. There's a lot of feedback. A lot of feedback. Like an echo, almost. It really is. All right. All right. Do we have any public input? None at this time. None at this time. Thank you. All right, uh, let's move to number three of April 9th. Any commentary? I didn't get an agenda or minutes for this meeting. Oh, oh should have been sent Friday. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah go they were right sent a while ago, Becky. Yeah, it's a, and it's a whole group. <clears throat> I make a motion to accept the minutes as presented. April 9th, Joanne, okay? Yes, that's Joanne. Can I get a second, please? I will second it. Travis. Travis. 
Travis, okay. Okay. Um, moving on to April 16th. Whoops. Can you just vote on that one real quick? Oh, yeah. oh I'm sorry. Yes. Oh, yeah. I'm like, ugh. It's okay. Can I please do the roll call? So uh, to approve the minutes for April 9th, Becky Beal. Abstain. I didn't get them. Linda Corliss. Yes. Travis Dwyer. Yes. Rebecca Hopper. Yes. Denise Mallet. Yes. Lynn Manley. Yes. Nancy Newbert. Yes. Joanne Potter. Yes. Okay. Um, Becky, well, if you check in your. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. forwarding. Oh, eight, I just eight send one. them again to you. Thank you. Becky, I just forwarded it to you again. <clears throat> okay, I'm looking. Uh, where did we go? All right, now we're on to April 16th, the minutes for that meeting. Any questions or comments? There needs to be a correction on page, two. I think it's page two, um, the paragraph. Uh, Mr. Dwyer's name is spelled incorrectly. Is what? His last name is spelled incorrectly. Oh, goodness. You'd think I'd get it right by now. I know. Okay. April 16th, I'll fix that. And with that correction, I um, motion that we accept the minutes as uh, amended. As okay. Amended. Thank you, sir. All right. Can we get a second, please? I'll second it. This is Nancy. Okay. Roll call vote in favor or not. Please announce it. Rebecca Beal. I'm still looking at it. I'll call me at the end. Um, Linda Corliss? Yes. yes. Travis Dwyron? Yep, approve. Rebecca Hopper? Yes. Denise Mallet? Yep. Manley? Epstein? Nancy Newbert? I approve. Joanne Potter? Approved. And me, Estrella Schaefer, approved. This is Becky, I approve. Okay, so thank you. Eight again. Yep. Right, okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, so we are now on to the student report. Do we have our students here today? Hi. Yes, yes. Hi. hi. How are you guys? Hanging in, how are you? <laughs> You look nice tonight. Not that you don't usually, but you do. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you guys can hear us fine. Yeah, yes, there's. I'm experiencing the like hearing issues too. But <laughs> if I, I stop, all, uh... I'm hearing myself and I'm getting thrown off by it. <laughs> but I think I'm good right now, so I don't know. There's a delay. Yeah, there, there isn't much yeah. to report. I know that a group of us seniors. There was six seniors. We did have a really productive meeting with administration earlier this week about graduation. I thought it went, went really well. We just outlined a few ideas that we had. So that's what happened this week and I haven't heard of much of anything else from other students. So that awesome. was uh, the two of you. Mm -hmm. And that was um, uh, Maddie Mominy, who's class president. That was um, uh, Natalie Willette, who's Senior, who's the valedictorian? Uh, yeah, and, she's valedictorian. Uh, I'm sorry. I, she's valedictorian. Yeah. Val did I say it wrong? <laughs> okay. Uh, and then Cole Lacroix, who is the salutatorian. No. He's the senior, senior class president. Right. Sorry. sorry. And it was um, mm -hmm. Jake. Right? Is it Jake? Jackson. Jackson. That's it. I'm sorry. Oh, Jackson, Jackson Heck. Heck. Excuse me. Yeah. Jackson Heck. Yeah. We'll get it right. Uh, yeah, so we had a really good conversation. It was extremely well prepared presentation by the students that offered uh, four different scenarios. The, the level of thinking that went into that, the grace of the presentation, uh, the support from the, the, and the information they were gathering from students and trying to share out. Um, 
the next was that the administration, uh, noble high school admin, central office admin, we were going to discuss which options seemed to have the the most merit because we had a couple simple simple guidelines like we we've got to stay within phase one two three or four whatever time frame it happens to be under governor mills plans um and two it pretty much has to be something that we feel that if we put it in place we've got a pretty good chance of people safely following the guidelines that we put forth uh, I, I'm, you can picture something like a, a car parade and somebody decides to do something you don't want them to do or whatever and how things could go wrong. So we're, we were very impressed with uh, the level of thought put into it from safety, um, physical safety to sanitation to organization, um, extremely well done. And we're, we've got a meeting scheduled for early next week to come back and say, Here's what we're thinking at this point. So stay tuned. Yes. Fair you. to say. And then also, I don't know if you guys, if you've been around town, but we had donations for senior signs. So we've been trying to get those out. I know there's been people who've been picking them out, um, picking them up and bringing them to other people's houses. So those are really nice to see around town as well as those ones who got them made with pictures and stuff. So I would say look out for those because I've seen quite a few. They're really nice. I've also yes, been enjoying uh, the police department's sharing of, of students. Yeah, those are nice as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah for, uh, the police departments in the, in the local municipalities posting their seniors on their websites. Uh, very, very nice touch. Good piece. Um, the school signs are being sponsored by local businesses. Now you think of the situation that we're in, and local businesses are saying we want to we want to contribute to that. That that's that's just a great thing about where where we all live and work. Absolutely. All right. Anything else, you guys? Is that no? I think we're all set. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Is this our last meeting with you? No, we still have another one, right? No, we're going to make them go to like uh, December or something. I think. <laughs> know it. <laughs> we know you. where you, we know your phone. We know your phone numbers. We can call you. Yeah. <laughs> Here, keep us in contact. <laughs> All right. Stay safe. You too. Okay. Um, financial summary number eight. Financial summary for March, it says here. Number eight. Did I skip? Oh, I did. Oh, you know what? Yep, yeah, no, no, no. My paper slipped. Five. Uh, oh. strong t shirt and donations update. And I actually have a question on that one. Okay, go start uh, with the question. I don't have a My School Bucks account. How yep. do I pay for a t shirt? Yep. You can uh, send a check to, well, Jen, I'm going to let you speak because you've been collecting. So if you would like to email me your order, I can place that for you and send me a check. In I'm going to be in tomorrow to sign things, oh, right? That's perfect. Bring it okay. All right. And uh, so let me just find that in my note here. So um to date we have received funding for 1031 t-shirts wow that means that we have besides any donations that people are talking with us about we have five thousand eight hundred forty nine dollars to go towards food service to keep us feeding kids as long as possible and uh, awesome. i think we've got an agenda item here that is going to talk with some of our, let's see, the middle school folks, are they separate or are they part of this conversation, Mr. Roberts? I'm looking at my agenda. Can I just interrupt for one second? Yes. Um, so those t-shirts were the 1,030 whatever, those were sold in four days last week. We have not taken account since Thursday, last Thursday, a week ago. So between oh. last Thursday and today, not sure how many there are. We're taking a final count tomorrow. So oh. that was just from last week. 
Okay. Wow. And uh, I think, Anna, is there, Anna Sewell, is there anybody else? Is there another person from the middle school on at the time? Or, or are you going to be chatting with us uh, for the student council? I'll chat for the NMS student council. All right. Why don't you do the do the thing that you do for us? What well, do you have to raised, tell us? So we raised um, some money for the we did stuff the turkey la um, for Thanksgiving over Thanksgiving, and we raised a lot of money. Um, we raised lots of money, and um, what's it for? Well, it's for the NMS food pantries, or like the like the food pantry. You're gonna give them to the food pantries, um, like has a hope. One in, one in each town. One in Lebanon, one in Berwick, and one in North Berwick. Okay, Great. how much? What are you talking about for funds there? Like, um, do you remember? I don't really remember. I think Miss Leon might remember. <laughs> Miss Leon, can you unmute? Yep. There you are. Yeah. Are you talking about how much money was donated? Yeah, yeah. kind of. Um, Mr. Roberts might know the exact amount, but it's a thousand around there, a thousand dollars. Is that correct? Yeah, so what Anna is saying, and for the record, because I know this is being recorded, if we had 530 students like Anna, the middle school might be the best school around. Anna is fantastic, and we're glad to have her part of the board meeting. Um, yes, thank you, Anna, yes. for being there. Um, Miss Leon knows that as well. So Anna Sewell is a keeper, um, and the middle school is uh, lucky to have her. Um, so what she was describing is some of the things that student council has done. And then under the circumstances, Ms. Leon and Ms. Frisbee and a handful of student council members got together and they came up with their, the idea on their own to take most of their balance and, and direct that um, um, to Ms. Pelletier and to our um, nutrition program um, along with the uh, Noble Strong in the amount um, which is most of their balance is a very, and Anna, you want to hear this, it's a very hefty and exactly $1,000 that's coming from Noble Middle School Student Council and students like Anna um, and others that are going to go directly to Ms. Pelletier um, and the program to help out families in our district. That's amazing. I just want to say thank you to everyone for everyone, like everything people are thinking of food service. It's a great thing to hear that. So that's awesome. Did that make sense, Anna? Give me a give me a thumbs up, Anna. Did I do? Is that okay? Okay, just wanted to make yeah. sure. Can I can I just add something just to clarify with Anna? Um, we originally were going to give to House of Hope and so on, um, and I don't know if Anna was at our meeting when we kind of changed our plan slightly. But based on what's happening, that's where the change is being. The money's being now sent to this program. So I'm not sure if you know that, Anna, but. Anna, don't worry. That happens to me too. I get into a meeting and say, you did what? Yeah. <laughs> so, great. Uh, Mrs. Leon and Anna Sewell, thank you very much for your contributions to our, um, to our food service and to the students who are in need in our district. Those funds will be well taken care of. Is that right, Mrs. Pelletier? Mrs. Pelletier? That is certainly right. We are, um, like I said, I can't thank anyone enough for everything that's been donated within the community, just thinking about food service. So we certainly will take care of that. I hope to feed many more kids. Um, that's the plan. And we have a couple of citizens who have also contacted the contact Jen to talk about some donations. And when those come in, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about those. Thank you. Excellent. Really appreciate the community we have. Um, okay, number six, attendance update. Yes, yeah, so uh, North Berwick is hovering around the 90% mark, Huzzy in 90 to 92 range. Uh, Knowlton is 95 to 96% range. I think they get up early in the Wheaties. Uh, Lebanon is 90 to 93%, the middle school 90 to 92. Uh, Ninety percent at the middle school, and I also checked in uh, for Mary Hurd Academy. They're at a hundred percent. They've met with all of their students. They're 
they've seen a dip. They're at about 70% on the daily attendance, but they're seeing it start to head back in the right direction right now. So our attendance rates are um, pretty darn close to our regular attendance rates. That's awesome. I'm gonna ask how that compared. All right, excellent. Um, all right, number seven, senior letter. So um, I'm just going to forego number seven because it was really about the, the meeting that led to the, to the discussion with the students that was saying, hey, you know, the, the very, at the very minimum, we said we, we know we've got to do, we're going to do something. And let's start with the virtual. Let's see where this goes. Can't make any promises. I'd heard of um, probably, I don't know, four or five districts that put out dates and said we're going to do this on this date. In, in our discussions, we just felt like we can't three two and a half months from now. How how, how are you calling anything? So yeah. let's not do that. Like, we didn't want to get people's hopes up and say, "Hey, this is what's going to happen." So we're we're looking at um, uh, at a bare minimum uh, the a, a very nice piece that we hope will just become a keeps, keepsake for students. Um, We've got something else in the works uh, that we'll see where that goes, as I already mentioned. And then separately on adult education, the students that are graduating there, how would you like to be in an adult ed program right now looking to pick up your high school equivalency? You, you took a, a different pathway, which is great, and you get to that point and you say, wait a minute, I'm, I'm going to miss out on a graduation that I already missed out on. How did that happen? So they're looking at uh, the, the, the group of students there is uh, looking to rent out a local venue to have their graduation at and to serve a dinner and have a certain number of people that can attend per person. It's a very, very small class, so there's, we're not going to worry about... Uh, our particular numbers and we're going to take care you know Brenda she will take care of all the details with her folks around um, proper protections so um, I'm glad to hear that the plans for um, adult education are moving forward as well thank you great, great. any questions all right so now we're on number eight financial summary Um, you'll see that there are some monies, some percents left in certain accounts that you would probably expect to find, like I'll pick transportation, for example. Um, we're, we're not expending in some areas. The uh, balance of this, so we, we know that we're typically allowed to carry 3% in our fund balance each year, and we also know that uh, there's a cap that's what did the voters approve that you can spend. However, this is uh, unusual circumstances because we've already heard from the state that their district should be thinking about curtailment for next year. The last time we had a curtailment that I can recall was 12-13 uh, and we did not receive our June subsidy so we, got, we, we lost eight and a half percent of the, the state funding. Um, so I would expect uh, they're not going to do it in, in smaller increments in a month. So a district should be prepared for at least a month worth of curtailment, if not potentially a second month. But a, a month for us, uh, Denise can shake her head madly and say no. But when I look at the total amount that comes from the state divided by 12, I get about 1.7 million, about a million and a half ballparkish. So um, I think that it, and one, the three percent for us is somewhere around 1.2 ish, 1.2 million maybe. So I think that the district is uh, uh, needs to work at um, this May at the end of uh, at the end of this month. We don't want to be freeing up money to start knocking off some one-time only projects, even though they have to be done. Uh, they, they're still going to just have to be put off unless it's absolutely unavoidable so that we can um, ensure that the district has more uh, funding available to help get through any pot potential curtailments next year. 
By curtailments, can you clarify exactly what that would mean? That's when the state says we can't meet our, our, our financial obligation. So if you take the approximately, let's say that the state contributes $20 million towards the 2021 budget and says that um, we can't make our June payment. So that's, uh, you know, out of $20 million, that's, uh, <clears throat> let's see, that's one twelfth of that, whatever that comes to off the top of my head, I'm not with it. Um, so, so that amount of money just doesn't get paid. The, to the, sorry? That would be because of the economic situation and the shortfall in taxes? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that the coffers sorry. just don't have the monies in it that were anticipated when the uh, the essential programs and services funding was determined for preparation for next year. Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Does anyone have any questions on that? Are we all good? Silence. I'm going to assume silence. Okay. Um, Vote number nine, vote to call and approve the warrants for the budget meeting and the validation referendum to authorize the notice of amounts adopted. So. Yes, so there's a rather long statement there uh, that went out to each board member, I believe. Yeah. That it reads, um, it has the date at the top, it says May 7th, 2020. And the beginning of it is that I move that the vote entitled uh, the vote to call and approve the warrants for the budget meeting in the BVR and the, so forth. Um, someone who, uh, a board member who uh, wants to put forward the, the current draft of the budget to the voters would, and to call the meeting for that, would um, read this statement to the uh, publicly and then the rest of the board members would follow the usual seconding questions and, and voting. So can I have someone please make a motion and read the text as noted? Someone, anyone? I, 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 is, it, is it in our email or where was the statement? Yeah, it's part of the, it's part of the uh, agenda. I've got it right here. Pardon me if I look away, I'm reading it off the other computer. Thank you, um, I move that the vote entitled call vote to call and approve warrants for the budget meeting and the budget validation referendum and to authorize the notice of amounts adopted be adopted be approved in form present presented at this meeting to this meeting and that a copy of said vote be included with the minutes of this meeting. Was that what you needed? Yes, it is. Uh, can I get a second? Where is it going? I'll second it. This is Nancy. Thank you. Okay. Um, any discussion? Comments? All right. I'm going to do a roll call vote. Becky Beal? Yes. Linda Corliss? Yes. Tra <clears throat> Excuse me. Travis Dwyron? Yes. Rebecca Hopper? Yes. Lynn Manley? Yes. Nancy Newbert? Nancy Newbert? Yes. Joanne Potter? Yes. And me, Estrita Schaefer, yes. Denise? Did we get Denise? Yes. Oh. Did I, did I skip you? Sorry. Uh, uh, okay. I'm not sure. I, I just may not have marked her. So the second one, uh, Estrita, that needs to go with that is number 10 on the S1 bat. We would need somebody to read the entire statement on the SRF. Okay. It begins with uh, uh, the warrant and notice. Yes. yes. And I have someone yeah. please read this document. I would do it myself, but I can't. <laughs> That's the issue is that I can't go back from screen to screen. So I'm trying All to right. it up on my I, phone. I've got right. it. Is it is it the top part that says voted? Votes to be adopted. Uh, it, would, it would have to be the page, on Becky. The whole page? Yes. Okay. All right. My Samoa is going to get cold. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, votes to be adopted at the, by the school board of 
Main School District, Administrative District Number 60, at a meeting on May 7, 2020, voted that the warrant and notice of election of Main School Administrative District Number 60 presented to the meeting be approved, and that a referendum election for the district be called for July 14, 2020, for the purpose of approving the issuance of bonds <coughs> or notes of the district. Of the district for minor capital project purposes as described therein. Further voted that the notice of this public hearing presented to the meeting be approved and that a public hearing on the issuance of bonds or notes on minor capital projects purposes be held at, on June 23rd, 2020 at 6.30 p.m. as directed therein. Further voted that the foregoing warrants and notices shall each be signed by a majority of the school board and that such signatures may be made electronically by execution of counterparts or in person at the convenience of the members of the school board. Thank you. We need to essentially get a second or do we just discuss and vote? And second. That's really a the motion. Technically, it, it is to have that be put forward the All right. referendum. All right. So, can I please have a second? This is Joanne. I'll second. Thank you, Joanne. Uh, any discussion or question? Okay. Right. Uh, roll call vote. Becky Beal. Yes. Becky? Yes. Uh, Linda Corliss. Yes. Travis Dwyron. Yes. Rebecca Hopper. Yes. Denise Mallet. Denise? Yep. yep. I was muted. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Lynn Manley. Yes. Nancy Newbert. Yes. Joanne Potter. Yes. And me, Estrita Schaefer. Yes. Okay. okay. So we have a 9 0 and then the. Uh, the question that is new for the, it's, it's not a question, it's a procedural piece that we should uh, let the public know about. It said that the uh, budget meeting warrant, the warrant and the notice of election and the notice of amounts adopted at budget meeting shall each be signed by majority of the school board, which is typical. And that such signatures may be made electronically by execution of counterparts or in person at the convenience of the members of the school board. And if you look, um, Jen, where don't we have papers ready for that? Or are people coming in? I thought we had papers ready. People are coming in tomorrow. Great, great. I, had, I don't know if I, if I missed something up. I had signed up for a 915 slot, um, but discovered today that uh, I need to go in later. When I went in to see if there was another slot open, I didn't see that I had signed. So I don't know if I did something wrong or what, but hopefully I'm on for toward the end of the. Estrita, you're of, on for 1045. Good. Okay. Good. Turns out my husband needs the car tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I, I stole your 915. Oh, good. Um, perfect. All right. Are we all set with that then, Steve? Yes, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, let's see. Close that down. Now we're moving on to the uh, vote to call the school revolving renovation fund. Uh, nope. Well, did, that's what we yeah, that was that looking? last one. Oh, it didn't right, say right, right. SRF, but it, it, said, it called yeah. it minor capital. Right. Um, I'm looking at the SRRF detail sheet here uh, for number 11, the uh, SRRF oh. and construction updates oh. with the drawings. Oh, okay. Okay. Excuse me. Thank you. I'm, I'm looking at my... I'm doing the same thing, Becky. I am not going back and forth on screens. Okay. This could get really interesting here. Uh, I've already tried it with Chris Russo and it worked then. So I am going to share a screen with you. 
This could be good for a few laughs. Let's see how this works out. All right, so I'm gonna click on share screen. Good luck, Just Steve. Talk. Thank you, may the, force, may the electrons be with me. <laughs> Woo! Look at that, Steve. Are, are you seeing the uh, MSA? Yeah. 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 Oh, I like yeah. it. Nice job. Oh, yeah. Okay. Read it, but so, it's there. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to make you a little nauseous. I'm going to skip down. This is the. How's that? This is the uh, current one, the current plan for Vivian Huzzy. You see the existing building here, uh, and then the picture that I'm going to go to is the. Uh, excuse me, that's the uh, upper level, the existing building, and then the lower level where things get pretty interesting because you see off to the far right in this area. I don't know if you can see my cursor. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the additional space. We uh, created an, indo an indoor courtyard uh, that's completely enclosed with a glass walkway for maximum visibility. And both in the indoor courtyard connects to a learning commons um, that is a, a 21st century, think of it as a 21st century library. So um, that's the current consideration for Vivian Huzzy School. So Steve, qu yes. quick question. Um, I don't know if you can put your cursor over the screen, but is the, um, so like the sort of arrow, the two diagonal lines on the right-ish, that is um, like, that's open now, right? Those are the open, that's where you would sort of walk into that courtyard. And then I, I'm just trying to figure out what's new so the, uh, the main entrance point of the building where you currently walk into, there is an expansion at that point to uh, allow for the relocation of the, man, the main offices and to create a, uh, an entry choke point or what's kind of referred to as a man trap to have entry, secure entry, and then entry into the building. Um, then as the walkway swales around that lower part of the building will be primarily the uh, oh thank you the elementary the, the lower elementary pre-k kindergarten wing of the building however it it could be used as um exit point for the end of the day to expedite busing but the primary of the entire entrance for the school is through that one central point uh, currently where it's located. It's just going to look a lot different. Is that helpful? Yeah, so the current entrance, I'm just trying to figure out the angle that I'm looking at. So the current entrance is like on the bottom of the screen. Right down to the left. very bottom edge. Um, if I move my cursor, does that move for you too? I yeah, I don't see it. See it. I don't know. Okay. Yes, Steve, so, it does. I see it. It's just not big. Okay. If you were looking, um, I can actually see where the seal is located. Uh, I, I think I know. where those dark black lines are. Yes, those dark black jagged lines. Those, this area uh, entering uh, okay. in yellow. Okay. That's the entrance. Oh, I, see your the, cursor. I see your cursor. Okay. And the blue areas in here are the main office, nurses' stations, so forth. So this, this actual uh, little image right here is where the seal currently happens to be located. So, the, so the, the blue boxes on the right upper are all new? Um, blue boxes right, yes, the very far right, those are one level um okay. all new spaces cool wow that's great mm -hmm. and with the uh, shifting of some of the um specialized educational programs from Huzzy to north berwick uh, north berwick's expansion will have room for further expansion without having to go to a second floor at Huzzy. are there other questions for that particular one for me right now Good. Okay, so I'm going to 
move forward to, you can see the, the wing design here, the grayscale wing design. That's all new construction and you can see red areas that are renovated construction. The bottom left, uh, it's, uh, it doesn't show it yet on this particular plan, but the administration would be moved to that side of the, uh, to this side of the uh, opening for the building. Might be, is it on this picture? Yes, it is. There it is. So let me just move this up. The, the red in, in here, there's the, uh, the vestibule, the man trap, and here's the principal's office, uh, conference rooms, here's uh, waiting rooms, so forth, nurses station, all of this area has been re relocated to this side and the uh, guidance suites and, and other social work services are located to the opposite side where the office currently is. And here's, if you, this, the, the walkway is not to scale, okay? I'll just tell you that up front. This would be walking toward the new entrance, uh, uh, excuse me, the new wing. It's not literally the new entrance of the school. This is, you're looking to the far right piece near the car is what it would look like similar to that, the, the new wing that will be built to enclose the, um, uh, the courtyard. Uh, but the walkway is not drawn to scale in this. Here's a look at the indoor courtyard. Here's a look, uh, sky view. You see the newest construction at the top of the picture, the new parking lot at the top right. You see the enclosed glass walkway. And to the left of that would be, you see a couple of double doors. They're yellowish in color, I think. That is the opening to the learning commons to exp expand that to an outdoor classroom in that um, in in the uh, enclosed area as well. I'm going to move from this picture. I'm going to go slowly. Don't want to make anybody. <laughs> okay, let me go on to North Berwick Elementary. Oh, this picture just shows expansions of parking lots. It shows it different uh, separated plan for the bus loop and the parent drop off. Although they both come into the same point of the school, it shows wetlands uh, that have to be accounted for. It shows the expanded parking lots to the left and to the right of the school. Those test pits have already been dug. Um, and the permitting for those with the DEP is already in, in process. North Berwick Elementary School. The top of this picture is where the parking lot currently is. Let me just see if I can expand that. Yeah, it's where the parking lot currently is. And in this particular picture, there is uh, off the back side of the school, what people wouldn't know unless they had an aerial view is the back of the school is kind of shaped like a W. So it takes that W that's currently there and does a full expansion to create a uh, new classroom wing and uh, once again an interior courtyard uh, that's protected year round that goes off of a learning commons there as well. And uh, we have some, uh, also some expansion for uh, pre, pre K and K classrooms. Uh, the the uh, cottages that we have there that are off this screen right now would be at the top of it to the to the left. Those would be gone because the four fives obviously would be moved into the school. We're not going to go through all this and leave cottages. Uh, those will have other uses. They're actually school property. They're not, uh, the state paid $110,000 worth of the cost of those approximately out of the 131,000. So they become an asset for us to use elsewhere. We've got a couple ideas on that, but that's a little further down the road. Um, let me move a little bit for, so there's, there's uh, an upper level that you can see. 
and then and that's mostly existing building. Then there is there's two potentials right now. One shows uh, a lower level, um, but there's a different one that shows that the that the new additional gray piece is actually not on the ground because of the steep grade uh, behind the school there. It's actually a second story and it has uh, an underground, uh, an area below it that is a protected space, nice and cool in the, in the summertime and uh, provides, you know, even rainy days for kids to get outdoors and get a little bit of fresh air and so forth and stay protected from the weather. I'll show that as we move forward. Top right, um, you see a triangular piece. That is the expansion to the classroom, um, like about northeast on this picture in this area. <clears throat> and then the uh, cafeteria, <clears throat> excuse me, is expanded in this area. And in each of the cafeterias that we're uh, doing work with, we are opening up um, low stimulus spaces as well because some kids have uh, it cannot attend cafeteria time with their classmates because of extenuating circumstances with volume and uh, uh, creating agitation. And then out here we have uh, the expansion that would account for the pre-Ks in the kindergartens. So this is um, if the plan were to be a, to the far right would be a single level, the pre-Ks and, and Ks, but what if the, uh, what if the North Berwick, if the, if the major addition out in that back area, what if that were a second level? And I believe I have a picture look at it. Here's the uh, front, uh, just a prospectus of what the front entrance would look like. You can see the expanded administration wing. You can see the uh, safety point and so forth. And you can sort of see the swale that cuts off the, um, pass the, the public access to the building versus the bus access to the building, the drop-off loops. And this shows uh, the backside. This is option A. This is if the expansion to the the major expansion, which is to your left, if that was at ground level, uh, but it doesn't, this picture doesn't take into account the steep slope. And to the right, you can see the kindergarten pre-K addition. And then there is an option B coming up in a minute. I'm gonna move to that. Hold on. <laughs> I'll go nice and slowly. Already been there. Oh, here we go. So you see the idea for the uh, open underside of the school that creates kind of an in lots of interesting opportunities for the school and uh, deals deals much better with the grade of it. The school is a tri level, so we can actually go off the first the the, the base level, or we could go off the second tier level. So those are the two options being explored. And we've already done the test pit work on that as well. Questions? Um, we've, we've been very fortunate with our neighborly situation here because we're considering talking with some of our neighbors. Um, we happen to know the executive board on the right side of the property that owns, I don't know, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 acres, whatever is over there. And we're looking at flexibility and, and uh, uh, expansion of parking lots or, remo or, or relocating the T-ball field. And then also during the construction time to alleviate that crazy one stretch area at uh, Varney, the, um, we, we know someone who is a, a relative of a per, uh, one of the abutters on the left side of the school and where material and storage and access points could be made so that it wouldn't interfere with any of the flow of the school traffic. So we've been very fortunate 
with this project. And, and when you do those kinds of things, it speeds up timelines and saves you money. <clears throat> so here is the overview of the current, this is pretty much, this is the current school. Steve, what is the separated classroom area? Uh, the, the, uh, the top left? Yes. That's the four or five cottages. And they're going to stay? No. Nope. No. Okay. Nope. Oh, this is the existing site? Oh. Yeah, that was existing, correct. So okay. you can see uh, in this picture, the far right corner of the darkest gray is the pre-KK. You can see the... Uh, the open diamond area that it would be the uh, major expansion. The only thing that I asked is if they go with the second level on that to paint the interior walls green, put up a scoreboard and we'll call it the green monster. Um, <laughs> then uh, towards some property just past the parking lots that we have, uh, this, this neighbor here, we'd like to do some discussions with that person about uh, field use and some other practical things. There's a great big yellow house that sits right here that is uh, very, very nice neighbors. Hanson, Lebanon. So I'm gonna shrink this down just a little. So the uh, building to the left that straight shot from the yellow in the up in the left down to uh, the yellow and blue at the bottom. That's for the most part the, the current school with its classrooms on each side. The topmost piece that looks I don't know it looks almost like a little uh, uh, violet or some some light light pink purplish shade. That's the expanded cafeteria services that would be required if we had one cafeteria instead of two. Um, up in the top middle, closest to the very top, we have um, a very, uh, this whole section here would include the main entrance, the, the man trap. It would include the, um, the uh, administrative wing right next to it to the left in green. To the right of it would be the restroom facilities, uh, the basketball court, some seating that pulls out. And uh, we're, we're made plans for 500 person seating. Um, this is, uh, and, and it's a wooden court floor. And this is where the band room is, band course kinds of programs that have back access to a stage area. And then Kevin's maintenance work that has to happen there. And then storage. Um, the the old building here's here's the current library it's a it's a, a light light reddish color i guess almost and so this would be expanded not significantly it would actually only take up some space of an existing teachers room there um, that would provide them with more storage they're really just things are piled behind it a curtain and kind of like feels like the Wizard of Oz don't look back there um, and, and they do a great job sharing the space but there just isn't enough storage for for any of the materials this uh, to the far right this light blue all of this is uh, the new three four fives that would be in in this area and it's a two it's a primarily a one story but to the right end of it, there'll be a second story as well that will be an empty shell. It'll have two classroom spaces, empty shell that will have the possibility of future expansion in another decade or something like that. The cost for us to do that is minimal compared to what the cost would be down the road because we'll put the, the groundwork into the, in, into the preparation. And we have, uh, there's a, an entrance is here on the far left currently near the yellow doors. And that's going to be shut off uh, to the bus loop that is currently right here. Uh, the entrance and exit will be available, but we're going to build new pre-KK 
separated playground areas out here where the current paving is. And so we'll reclaim a lot of good uh, usable space for kids out there as well. And you can see in this picture, the uh, expandable space. Um, so this is the, yeah, this is the upper floor. So the original design was, we're not going to need this extra space at the end of the building. We'll need below it, but we won't need this for right now. And we said, it doesn't make any sense not to complete that shell and uh, be prepared for, uh, for any future expansion. We think that that's making good decisions um, for local tax dollars and state tax dollars, any state possibilities that come down the road later on. Um, so you see the gray scale new construction. You see some, uh, the red scale in here is all the renovation that would be included in that. We just had te test pits dug out there Monday, I think it was. More renovations. Uh, here's a sample look at the front of that relocated front entrance to the school. Same choke point, uh, that tall structure with the multicolors in it. Just to the left of that, you can see the entrance, uh, but separate, um, f separate pedestrian and separate bus traffic. Taking advantage of as much natural lighting as we can. We're also going to be taking advantage of as much natural cooling as we can, whether it's through um, geothermal tubes in, into the ground or whether it's through uh, different kinds of heat pumps. There are also some other opportunities that are just coming onto the market. Here's an overlay of the gym so that uh, the townspeople had asked about what the seating capacity was. This, uh, this shows how the space would work out for uh, rental use as well or community use for community events. Here's the original site with uh, Lebanon to the far left and the, the small bridge. And you can see the bus loop about in the middle of the picture. But when we do the renovation, the bus loop will be half taken out. Even this part here will not be a bus loop. The loop that we need to keep is goes past the playground and allows the service road to get to kitchen deliveries and to the maintenance room out back. Uh, we'll keep the playground area out to the far left. We'll have a reclaimed satellite parking area to the left where the school was, and we'll be able to extend the playground area and, and sports fields out further behind the school as well. Um, so, and then we've talked about all our key pieces that we want to make sure of our, our sustainability, our being able to reduce the net carbon footprint on the building, as well as our costs for um, general cleaning, maintenance, and durability of materials. Questions? Where is this at this point? Last time we've seen. Uh, sketches, it was all maybe this, maybe that. Is this more um, finalized? This is, this is pretty well advanced. We're still looking into the, the particularly at North Berwick, the first floor level or going into the second floor level. But uh, these other pieces are taking really good shape at um, Huzzy and at um, the Hanson School. Excellent. Um, members of the uh, team, the, the building committee, did you have anything you wanted to add? It was, that was a pretty thorough overview, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You know, we're, we're live here or we're being taped and it's going to be shown again and people can be referred to this. Yeah. So give, give the public the opportunity to see where we're at. Yeah. Great. I'm going to stop sharing this tab now. Are we okay? Yep. 
All right, thank you. Thank you. Oh my goodness, Chris Russo. <laughs> He's gonna be saying, did you pull that off? Did you really <laughs> Okay. All right. Uh, policy readings. Number I'm 12. Sorry? Policy readings. Oh, a streeter and Joanne. How long oh. ago did we look these over? I a long time. <laughs> it's been a while. And then we hit that B word and uh, they immediately took a back seat. So um, yeah, so a streeter, the first one is what Number EDC, what letter is uh, EDC each of district vehicles and equipment? Okay. Wondering if there's any questions on that. Fairly straight. See the changes are pretty minor. Mostly cross references. Mm -hmm. Anyone have any questions? Make a motion to accept the policy. This is Julian. I'll second it, Ms. Becky. Steve, would it be all right to do motions and seconds and then vote for all of them, or do we need to do individual yes. ones? Yes, it would be. It would be okay to, to take them as a group. Okay. Then uh, let's. And then if there's any dissent during the conversation, okay. one could be pulled out. Right, that makes sense. All right, okay, so then the next one is um, EHB, school record retention. Yes, so we're required to do, to, to keep school records, of course. And so this policy is a very short one that just says, hey, you're required to do this. So not a lot to do with this policy. Question? Uh, can I, yeah, anybody have anything they want to know about this or are you good? Can I get a motion? I'll we'll make wait. a motion. You want to wait? We'll just take them as a group. Of three we'll do, okay. Right. Oh, I was going to. All right. I got you. Never mind. Okay. I had a different Is process that okay? in mind. That makes sense. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so then we have uh, EHBR, the procedures yeah. and schedules. For, for yes. So we're, we're recommending to delete that from a policy. First of all, it's not required. Second of all, it's never right. It comes every year to two years. It comes out with a stack of changes that has to be kept. Uh, Jen, would you give an example about the uh, resource and the uh, and the opportunity for for the office to stay on top of this rather than having it be a policy? Um, typically, every other year, Drummond Woodsum holds a school law. Um, conference for secretaries, administrative assistants, and they hand out um, a book that has all the um, records retention laws in it, and it's the most up-to-date laws. Um, they also email us with, when anything changes, so it's a really good, useful resource for us to have. So to keep that as a policy, what it means is it really should come back every other year to be rechecked to remove it from policy and allow it to be a, uh, a requirement of the central office to follow EHB means that the secretaries uh, and, and the administrative assistant, they attend those conferences, get the materials and keep those updated in their files. Okay. All right, any questions on this? All right. Almost through. Uh, the last one, JJIBC, relations with booster clubs. So the most significant thing is just a little, this is the little wording things, like it might say group here or club there. So we, we went for a commonality of terms. The other thing was that it's, um, it, no one can be required to participate. Like it can't be, uh, that a, a senior who doesn't participate in a certain booster activity can't, it doesn't get time on a sports field or in a club or something like that. So uh, we made sure that our policies match there. And then based on Amy Chassie and um, RKO's recommendations on how to handle 
funding, and we worked with Denise on that to ensure that this policy met the guidelines we've been provided. There is a cross-reference date miss. Uh, excuse me, a um, a date missing on the bottom of that one. It should say. Uh, first of all, EHB should say on the records retention date, that was not uh, posted on the bottom. It should say January 13th, 2011. We'll make sure that original date was on. And the other one was um, uh, the boosters one didn't have a date on it either that it was originally adopted. That was May 28th, 2009. So we'll add those two pieces. But other than that, that we're, these are pretty much as presented. Sure. Any questions? Thank you. 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 I'll make Thank that you. motion and to delete EHBR from the policy. This is Joanne. Thank you. This is Becky. I'll second it. Okay. Excellent. All right. Uh, roll call vote. Becky Beal. Yes. Linda Corliss. Yes. Travis Dwyron. Yes. Rebecca Hopper. Yes. Denise Mallet. Yes. Lynn Manley. Yes. Nancy Newbert. Yes. Uh, Joanne Potter. You. I know you already. Yes. Placed the, uh, <laughs> and me, Estrita Schaefer. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And Jen sent me a text saying, "Hey, the dates are actually on the bottoms of the one that the board's looking at." Okay, we'll make sure they're there. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. They're just not on what I'm seeing. Okay, uh, almost there. <laughs> Number 13, Assistant Special Education Director hiring. So, Sue, you want to chat a little bit about special education people? Sure. Um, am I, yeah. So, they, last week, it seems so long ago, there was a lengthy interview process, um, and actually it was really interesting with the, with the land of Google Hangouts and everything, um, Susan Macri pulled together three different groups who met with all of the um, applicants for the for the co director or co assistant director positions and put them through their paces. I will tell you that. Um, and both Mary Fitzgerald and why am I having a moment, Steve? Nicole. Nicole. <laughs> Winship. Peace. Um, came out on top. So those are the two folks that have been filling in as the, um, as the interims. And uh, I feel very strongly they've done it. They did a really nice job. I think Audra was part of it. Were you part of one of those interviews, Audra? Yep. Um, and so we are putting forward the, their names to move from interim to um, real. Is that, is that the right word? Um, for, the, for the going forward for 2021. And as difficult as the year was for Susan Macri with the changeover, that was a really tough part for her in the way the year is still going with the coronavirus and, 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 and how they have to conduct all their meetings and their work and make sure they're meeting all the students' IEPs. She has been exceptionally thankful for those two people in, in those roles. It's been a very, it's been very positive for Susan. I think I'm going to try to eke out a couple more years out of her instead of her retiring on us sooner. So, so it's, this is good for us, right? We're crossing our fingers. So uh, I think we need to approve that if you guys are willing and able. Does anybody have any questions? All right. Can I get a motion to approve those hires? I'll make a motion to approve the two hires, Mary Fitzgerald and Nicole Winship. Can I get a second, please? Under, I'll make a second. Is that Rebecca? That was Ms. Corliss. Linda, oh, excuse me. I'm trying to catch up with who I'm saying. Okay, I made the motion and she seconded. Thank you. 
Roll call vote. Becky Beal. Yes. Linda Corliss. Yes. Travis Dwyer. Yes. Rebecca Hopper. Yes. Denise Mallet. Yes. Um, Lynn Manley. Yes. Nancy Newbert. Yes. Joanne Potter. Yes. And me, Escrita Schaefer, yes. Thank you. All right. All right. Employment, new hires, retirement, and resignation. Okay, so it, it does take a bit of time. I'm sorry, it takes a bit of time for me to read the uh, probationary ones, twos, and we still have people who are finishing probationary threes, even though the state law changed. It didn't change for this group yet. So under probationary one, uh, would you like me to read just, can I just read the name because you can see the position? Estacio Donez, Dana Secunde, Brooke Valencia, Melissa Micho, Emily Nathan, Chris Sococo, Sloan Sorrell, Allison Abbott, Lisa Buckholtz, Rasheen McGuckin, love the Irish. <laughs> the Irish name just cracks me up. Um, Ashley Ridlin, Jennifer Upton, Amanda Anaselli, Leanna Andrade, Chelsea Grant, Megan Lyon, Lindsay Morin, and Kel uh, Kelly Schussler, Elizabeth Caverly, um, she says Caverly, excuse me, Michelle Gollin, Lindsay Healy, Andrew Kiriat Kutsakis. Mr. K will be impressed. I got that. Um, Audrey Coleman, Jordan Larrabee, Sarah LaRanger, Donna Martell, Christy Oberge, Don Pete, Anna Saroy, Emma Toth, Drew Albert, Jordan Carpenter, Ben Chase, Ryan Davis, Samantha Hayes, Tim Jones, and Ryan Kelsey, Morgan Lynch, Sophie, uh, Sophie Larson, Brian McMillan, Mary McAuliffe, Shannon Scribner, James Sutter, Bridget Wright, and Liz Mitro. Those are the probationary first name, first year people we are looking to move to second year. Do you have any questions or comments? Can I get a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to, oh, Travis has got it. Okay, a second please. I'll second, I'll second. All right, um, roll call vote. Becky Beal. Yes. Linda Corliss. Yes. Travis Wyron. Yes. Rebecca Hopper. Yes. Denise Mallet. Yes. Lynn Manley. Yes. Nancy Newbert. Yes. Joanne Potter. Yes. And me, Estrita Schaefer, yes. Nine oh. Okay. okay. Yep. Thank you. For probationary two positions moving to probationary three, Tracy Hallisey. She's under administrator and half under literacy coach. That's why I'm reading her name in this list. Jen Beams, Allie James, Aaron Dolly, Sam Crossman, Aaron Silver, Trish LePage. Barb Childress, Becky Bolstridge, Colleen Terigny Hill, Amanda Richer, Melissa Weber, Kelly McGlynn, Laura Kramorski, Kelsey Bickford, Jenny Chung, Katie Brown, Courtney Ruland, Jim Rose, Jim Winslow. Olivia Moore, Elise LaPlante, Keenan Blindo, Talia Davis, 
Jason Demarota, Alex Swed, Taryn Frizzell, and Linda Smith. Can I go to a second, please? I'll second it. Thank you. Okay. Okay, Who's so that, Mr. Becky, Dwyer? Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Roll call vote, Becky Beal. Yes. Corliss. Yes. Travis Dwyer. Yes. Rebecca Hopper. Yes. Denise Mallet. Yes. Lynn Manley. Yes. Nancy Newbert. Yes. Joanne Potter. Yes. And me, Estruda Schaefer, yes. I know. Thank you very much. Last group, these are people who are and would be moving to continuing contract. Stephanie Biscow, Jamie Martin, Donna Tam, Liz Erickson, Megan Ward, Rhonda Tweed, Debbie Ornberger, Missy Royce, Emily Frisbee, Becca Pauling, Matt Reed, and Robin Hayes. I make a motion to approve those names with congratulations. Can I get a second? I'll second. This is Nancy. Okay, roll call vote. Becky Beal. Yes. Linda Corliss. Yes. Travis Dwyer. Yes. Rebecca Hopper. Yes. Denise Mallet. Yes. Lynn Manley. Yes. Nancy Newbert. Yes. Joanne Potter. Yes. And me, Estrita Schaefer, yes. Okay, great. Thank you. I appreciate your patience while I read through those names. All right, so um, let's see. We have uh, a couple of new hires. Uh, Megan Lyon, I already read uh, on the previous document because she took over a classroom at Huzzy extremely early on in the school year. It was more than 90 days, so we counted that as her probationary one. So we've already moved her to probationary two, so I won't do any other work with her name. Morgan Ross is uh, the anticipated grade eight math teacher at Noble High School. Um, she and Mia Ferguson, who is the anticipated grade eight science teacher, have both interned with us, they're UNH students, interned with us for the last year. So it's great when we get to hire people out of school who have actually worked with us, understand that we have in place and are ready to rock and roll. And both of these young ladies have also completed their master's degrees. Off to great starts. Um, and then the third, so I'd, I'd need uh, to, uh, to hear from people about those two hires. That's for that rounding out the eighth grade team. Okay, can uh, I get a to accept assuming that the budget is not passed. This is not yeah. approved. Could you catch that? Yeah, it's based on whether the budget is approved. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Steve, could you say the Travis, you're really breaking it. Hello? Steve. Yeah, I think we lost Travis muted himself. Yeah, he muted him. Could you just say their names again, Steve? I wasn't fast enough on the uptake. Morgan Ross. Okay. Math. Mia yep. Ferguson. Ferguson. Mia okay. Science. Got it. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'd need a, a motion on those. I think did, Travis just did that, didn't he? Yes, I made a oh, motion on that. Okay. Thank you. We need, we need a second, please. A second. Becky. Thank you, Becky. Uh, okay, roll call vote. Becky Beal. 
Yes. Linda Corliss. Yes. Travis Dwyron. Yes. Rebecca Hopper. Yes. Denise Mallet. Yes. Uh, Lynn Manley. Yes. 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 Joanne Potter. Yes. Okay. Uh, and me is here to shake her. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Forgot my uh, again. Last one I have for the, this one's not technically a new hire. We're expanding a role for Eileen Sahagian. She is the Excel teacher at uh, Knowlton. She previously was, she's two days a week. She previously used to be at both Berwick schools at four days a week. And a couple, two or three years ago, she moved to two days. Um, the person who was in the position, uh, Lorna Henley retired, and so we're uh, moving uh, Eileen. She went through the entire interview process and so forth. Uh, uh, unanimous uh, selection there, so we're going to move her back to four days a week versus two. Okay. I just want to add that Mrs. Sahagian is a rock star in our family. Yes. She, she is absolutely one of the best. Yeah. I shall pass that on with Please pleasure. Do. Oh, I and Audrey she knows listening here too. We feel that way. <laughs> Say that again. She knows we feel that way. <laughs> she does. Okay. But you can pass it along anyway. Sure. Okay. Uh, uh, one other expansion that we had is that uh, Laura Cashel is our Tri Town Bookmobile person, and. Uh, we, we have been so impressed this year with the, uh, the PR work that she's done on that. I had a conversation with her about uh, expanding her role into the PR realm. We talked about a, uh, a point for PR person that's in the budget for uh, central office to deal with the website, keep that running, keep the message and the work flowing to the community, especially during the, uh, well, at any time, but, but particularly during the, uh, COVID-19 during the, um, the construction phases, the SRF. And, that. and so when I was talking with her, she says, so you know my first degree is in public relations. <laughs> I said, well, that kind of, kind of makes a lot of sense. So we have moved her from uh, the point, she'll be a point eight five. So she'll be four tenths doing that job. Um, through central office, and she already had a .45 with the uh, with the, the bus mobile. So that's uh, almost similar to a contracted service for us. Um, I have some retirements. Uh, Street, are you okay if I keep going with retirements and resignation? Thank you. So Kathy Sloat has been the uh, has been a secretary at Hanson most recently in her 30 plus year career in the district. She is, uh, she is retiring at the end of this year. I don't need a, a motion on that. I just am sharing the information with you. Um, Paul Slavinsky, who is the assistant athletic director has submitted his resignation, excuse me, retirement for the end of the school year. And um, I would need a motion on your part to accept that. I get a motion on Paul. I'll make a motion to accept the resignation of Paul Slavinsky. Thank you, Becky. Uh, can I get a second, please? I'll second it. Who had the second? Linda. Linda. Linda, thank you. So roll call vote, Becky Beal. Yes. Linda Corliss. Yes. Travis Dwyron. Yes. Uh, Rebecca Hopper. Yes. Nate Mallet. Yes. Lynn Manley. Yes. Nancy Newbert. Yes. <clears throat> Joanne Potter. Yes. And me, Estrita Schaefer. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, Julie, so Aaron Silver is a, um, you know, uh, Estrada, would it be okay with you if I read off these resignations in a cluster and had the board, if they want to pull a name out, they can ask, but their resignation Absolutely. letters? Is that okay? You Thank you. Retire, I have, 
Yeah, Travis, go ahead. Retirement. Travis was asking if there were retirements or resignations, I believe. The ones that I'm going to be reading are resignations. The first two were retirements. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, I have two. What? You got you on you. You're really breaking up, Travis. Mike, this can you interpret? Be, this might be his question. I've got two people on the retirement list that I haven't read to you yet, and I should have continued with that. We just no, need, I, to be, I, need to be I, better I, at reading lips. Yeah, <laughs> I, I can't, folks. I don't know if Travis needs to call Sue or call someone, and someone can relay his voice, but I, I that was just a lucky guess, I think, Sue. I can't do okay. anything. I thought you were magical. Okay, you can shut yourself back up now. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good point, Sue. Thank you. Travis, would, if you wouldn't mind, if you could call Sue's phone, she can set it next to her computer for us. Sue, is that yeah. working? For him? Okay, so the other two names that I will provide, these I don't need motions on either because of their ed educational technician roles. Uh, Candace Ryan, who has worked for the and Marilyn Potvin, both of them have had numerous years um, in the district, I was just reading a message from uh, Travis, and uh, they they have really dedicated themselves to helping our students improve their individual skills through their work as um, uh, RTI, intervention, <coughs> literacy support, and so forth, other roles. So uh, very, very much appreciated the work that they have done. Um, for the resignations, I'll read this as a group. We have... Um, a guy by the name of Chad Dickerson. Anybody ever heard of him? We referred to him as the Pied Piper. He is going to be accepting a position in another school district at a high school level, which is kind of like his, he's been in his dream job, but he has another dream too. And it's a very difficult decision for him, but um, it's, uh, he would actually be taking over, potentially taking over a program for someone for whom, who was his mentor. So it's not for him to say, no, thank you. Uh, Aaron Silver, who is a grade three teacher at Hussey. Julie Smith, who is a Lebanon uh, school's guidance counselor, submitting a resignation. Amari Boyd, who is a seventh grade social studies teacher. Peter Casasa Bluen, who is a sixth grade ELA teacher and Karen Pelletier, who's a Huzzy grade two. And I just heard from, I, I guess Karen's moving to Florida in July with her husband's relocation. Florida in July, no. So those names, I would need the board to uh, approve those six names for acceptance of resignations. Hey, can I get I'll a- I'll make that motion, this is Nancy. Okay, great, thank you, Nancy. Can I get a second? I'll second it, Ms. Becky. Thank you, Thank you Becky. Uh, any comment or anything? Just go straight to the vote. Um, roll call, Becky Beal. Yes. Linda Corliss. Yes. Travis Dwyron. Yes. Rebecca Hopper. Yes. Denise Mallet. Yes. Ben Manley. Yes. Nancy Newbert. Yes. Everybody yes? Yes, that was a yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Joanne Potter. Yes. And me, Estrita Schaefer, yes. Thank you. Um, I have a question. Please. I just realized we're not, I don't see it on the, on the uh, agenda. Do we need to vote on the contract in public? for the new superintendent? Or is that happening another time? You do. I think this is an appropriate time to do it, actually. You're doing all of your hires. So right. I think it's okay to do it right now. Right. So the board, we, we need someone to, to make a motion that. to add that to this particular agenda. And I have a motion to add the contract with Audra Beauvais to the agenda. I will make that motion. I'll second. second. 
Who seconded? Linda. Okay. I should be able to do this in my sleep now. Becky Beal. <laughs> yes. Linda Corliss. Yes. Oh. Be clear, this is the motion you're voting on. Travis Dwyron. Can I, can I back up? So I just want to write this down correctly. This is a motion to, this is a motion to accept the contract as presented. No, this is a motion to add it to the agenda, isn't it? It's a motion to add it to the agenda. Oh, to the agenda. Thank you. Actual. Thanks. Yeah. Sorry, I misunderstood your question. Where did I get to Travis? Did we lose him? Travis. Rebecca Hopper. Yes. Neil Mallet. Yes. Lynn Manley. Yes. Nancy Newbert. Yes. Joanne Potter. Yes. Linda Schaefer, yes. Thank you. Okay. So, um, Audra has seen the contract that uh, we worked out on the board and has expressed her satisfaction with it. So, um, I don't know if we need to go into any detail at this point, or do we just vote on the contract going forward? You can vote on the uh, the agreed contract. Okay. So can I get a motion uh, to vote on the contract to hire Audra Bouvet as the superintendent for MSAD 60 beginning of July 1st? I will make that. Who said that? Nancy. Ahead, Nancy, Nancy said that. Or Nancy. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Denise, do you want to second it? Sure, I'll second it. Uh, could you help, could you help me out? Who got the fur? Who, who made the motion? Nancy. Nancy made the Nancy. motion, and it was seconded by. No, I, I just said the feedback is so bad. I know what we're doing. <laughs> oh well, I, I tried to Nancy. make the motion. The Becky made the motion. The, the Becky made the motion. Becky, yeah. yeah. And then Denise seconded it. They kind okay. of said it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, so, in that case, I'm going to do the roll call vote to accept the contract. Um, Becky Beal. Yes. Linda Corliss. Yes. Travis Dwyron. Yes. Rebecca Hopper. Yes. Denise Mallet. Yes. Uh, Lynn Manley. Yes. Thank you, Lynn. Nancy Newbert. Yes. Joanne Potter. Yes. Astrida Schaefer. Yes. All right. Congratulations, Audra. Congratulations, Audra. Yeah, my uh, my desk. Uh, let's talk to my. Let's talk to. My. Congratulations, Audra. Thank you. Uh, Steve, I have a question. Um, according to the contract, I need to sign it, and so does Audra. Should I just bring it with me tomorrow, or email it yes. to you guys to print it out, and I'll sign it when I'm there tomorrow? Uh, Jen, can you unmute? So I have the contract. I can print it tomorrow and have it there for you to sign as Trita and okay. then I'll come in and sign. Okay. Right now it has a May 7th date. Should it be changed to May 8th because that's the date we're actually signing or is May 7th still okay because that's when we accepted it? That's when yeah. we did the vote. So I think that's the way we should do it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. May 7th. Excellent. All right. All right. Either, either date's actually okay because it doesn't take place until July 1st. So. That's true. Right. Okay. Yep. Okay. Other. Do we have any others? Yes, I'm going to be short with the. Um, I wanted to thank uh, a couple of folks out there. I wanted to thank um, Jenica Osborne, who, who is a French teacher at the high school. She delivered. She. I'm not sure if she made them by herself, but she delivered 22 French four and French five senior signs 
uh, to uh, from North Berwick to Lebanon that she oh yeah that she made this past week. So she took those signs out and posted them on each of the yards. I'm going to hold something still. I don't know. Can you kind of catch that? Can you see it? No. <laughs> No, it's really bad. No. Camera to camera to work so well. Oh, you can share your screen again. Oh, there it is. Steve Carly, you're you're one sixteenth of the screen, Steve. You're one sixteenth. And you're showing part of one sixteenth. Is it in our agenda, Jen? Didn't she throw it out there? Yeah, there's a picture of it in the agenda. So oh, there is. Okay. okay. Great. Yeah. Thank you. And then the other thing was that um uh Bubba Fries. Uh, there is a banner, check it out please, there's a banner where it says the Bubba Fry sign. Below that it says, congratulations class of 2020, Bubba Fry's, thing, uh, Bubba Fry's wings and things. And um, I, I thought that was a very nice thing of the local business to do. Um, Sue, I note that there is a hood ice cream sign right next to that. Yeah, don't I even talk you to me about that. I think <laughs> you have a conversation. Don't talk to me. <laughs> Um, uh, the also in, in we, uh, it was already mentioned a little earlier that there are signs going up in kids yards uh, senior yards um, posters of them and those are I believe those are either being created or but well, she's in charge of uh, Elizabeth Hamill's mom who is Jen Hamill I think our, our school nurse is in charge of the signs and it's in progress right now and some signs have already been delivered to yards and they're going to continue to work on that. So those are the ones that are being sponsored by the local businesses. Thank you. Great effort. All right. Does anyone else have anything? Okay. Do we have any public input? Well, we have, we do have a reminder about Jared Wilbur. Oh, gosh. Oh, excuse me. Thank you. Who I saw him on the right. news. He's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know about the Chew the uh, Chewbacca outfit or uh, <laughs> some of the things David Parr is doing, but uh, yeah, 207 did a special on him like, hey, look at this guy. Uh, comes sliding in with his... It's, excuse me, it's hilarious stuff. Like he comes sliding in across the room and he's got this thing and all of a sudden you see this finger point and it flashes purple mug, purple mug, weird purple mug. <laughs> he's just a character and he, it's really fun, a fun way to start the day. And whatever day we're on, he has done this every day. Every day. I have a theory about him. I think that he probably was the class clown in second grade. <laughs> Do you remember him, Rebecca? Do I don't know. I'm guessing. You just said I think he was also a graphics analyzer or something, yeah. you know. One of those <laughs> well, just to age me, I had him when he was a high when he was a high school kid. So um yeah, he's an interesting character. He's a great kid. Yeah. Or adult yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he's if kid. you haven't seen any of the videos, you ought to just um, just take a day. Like today, he talked about yogurt, and it was very interesting. And I learned something very new today. So there's just yeah. he's he's trying to keep kids engaged, and he's doing a good job. Check out 207. You can see one, or check out the district website, and it's J A R E D. So if you go to check it out, Jared Wilbur, and it's just I mean, you just watch one. He, yeah. it's 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 a hoot it would be interesting if he could actually include the board's email steve because he really includes a lot of staff members it really is well done i bet you the board would like to yeah. see that it's only seven to ten minutes each morning it's, it is a great way we get a lot of middle school kids that watch him uh, he really does a nice job with it and then he leads the flag salute he's getting 900 to a thousand hits a day yeah what yeah wow. yeah is this, Dave the, is this his first time being covered on the news because i swear i've seen it before I, uh, I thought I saw his picture at a post office, but that was a different thing. You no, know, um, <laughs> Becky, maybe, I think maybe it was on Facebook. Steve, no, I think Steve actually forwarded us one, like a video clip. Oh, okay. The beginning. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. pretty sure because I saw it too, but I think I think Steve had passed it along to us. Yeah, it, that was right right at the start of it. I didn't know he was going for the long haul. It was just like, wow, watch this guy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 
He's good. He's also been a judge on Noble's Got Talent. He's been with the kids, so he's done that for a few years in a row. So, yeah, uh, yeah. well done. Mm. Okay. All right. Do we have anything else? Can we uh, call for adjournment? I'll we'll get a motion. So before you leave, before you yep. make sure you take time to look out the window. The full moon is unbelievable. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Who is it? Ms. Veal? And no yes. Motion yeah. to adjourn. Okay. And second? Anybody for a second? I'll second. This is Linda. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. And for the last time, Vicki. I don't think so. Just uh, hands. Hands. No, I, can't. <laughs> I thought I saw something from May 14. So. Say that again. I thought I saw something from you from May 14th, something. Well, no? we previously had it in our budget schedule because we had um, the, the May 23rd or something like that was going to be the original, uh, the, the original town meeting. So we needed to get some things taken care of. We're, we're off to June now with that. So the next meeting for this group is uh, the fourth, let's see, 21st. Twenty first. Right? Twenty first. Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. We'll double check that. If we see anything else, we'll let you know. But I think it's May twenty first. All right. Okay. Oh, last roll call of the evening. Rebecca Beal. Hello. I agree. <laughs> Linda. Corley. I agree. Travis <laughs> Dwyer. Yes. Rebecca Hopper. Yes. Denise Mallet. Yes. Lynn Manley. Yes. Nancy Newbert. Yes. Joanne Potter. Yes. Astrida Schaefer. Yes. Have a good so before weekend. We, before oh, we shut off, wait, wait, don't, wait, don't and shut no off. And no snow. No snow. Don't shut off.